Hello everyone, welcome to this next episode on Anubhav Learning Series. In this series of videos, we will discuss about creating simple REST services in S4 HANA. Why simple REST services? Why they are better than OData services? Of course, OData services has its own advantages. However, sometimes you would also be willing to build simple REST services in S4 HANA. As we all know, the main purpose of REST service is to expose the data from your S4 HANA system and consume this data through the third party tools like .NET based applications, Java based applications, or you're willing to consume it over the cloud, maybe some other solutions in the cloud, and that's how you want to do access the data of S4. So in this episode, we will discuss about the approach to implement the REST service, plain REST service in S4 with ABAP programming. And also we will discuss the motivation of implementing REST service over the OData service. So let's get started. Our main question is why we need to use simple REST service over OData. What advantages does it give me? The first thing is OData services needs a definition to be done in form of entities. But when it, when it comes to simple REST services, that, that's not a mandatory stuff. You don't have to go to SEGW and write down your structure. That's not something which you can, you want to do it. Then in that case, you can go with REST service. REST service is also very helpful to implement very simple services to expose the data. They not just expose the data, but you can also perform all the different types of crude operations. That's another advantage of REST service. The another advantage is when it comes to OData service, if you want to support create operation, like post operation, you always have to implement the get entity. So for example, if you want to perform with OData, in order to achieve the create so-called the post operation it is mandatory to implement the get entity set yes have you tried it yes it won't allow you to post until you have a get entity set so that's another maybe reason why you would want to go with simple rest service so these are all some of the key reasons why you would want to go with a simple REST service and implement with your own custom way these REST services. So typically a REST service, as we all know, is mainly used to expose the data. So if I just wanted to quickly add here the client server once again, a quick client server architecture. So you would realize that in the client server architecture, the server is where you expose the data and client is where you consume the data from, right? So let's put here the client server architecture. So I just add the server and the client. So let's insert that over here. So let's imagine this is your server and we have probably these clients and they are contacting this server. So it's always request response architecture. You make a request, you get a response. That's, what sim that's how simple REST service works, request, response. So whenever you make a request, a request is considered to be composed of a header plus body. That's what a request is composed of. Similarly, when you send a response back, you will also have a response with header and body. Now, the body is optional in case of requests which are of type get. So in get basically you don't have a body. So mainly it's used in the post or put calls where you want to update the data or create new data. That's when you would send a, uh, the request with the body. And when it comes to response, of course, depending on the type of request, you have the response coming out of server. So that's your typical client server architecture. So here this server is nothing but your SAP S4 HANA server. So this is your SAP S4 HANA. And in my trainings of UI5 in a web on HANA, you would have learned how to build end-to-end -end OData services. If you have not subscribed to my training, please feel free to go ahead and subscribe my UI5 and Fury training. 
or my Abepon HANA Kames for HANA training if you're willing to learn how to build all data services using CDS views in S4 HANA you can go ahead and check anuboutrainings.com uh, so that's what we have already learned it but now this video is specifically focusing only on the plain rest service how can you do them how can you create them and what steps do we need in order to implement these rest service so that that's your client server architecture so now it's time that we go ahead and take a simple scenario and implement um, a, a rest service in the s4 on a system and then see how can we we use our client to make a request and response and we will be implementing both the get operation as well as the post operation the create operation in the system now in order to do that what steps do we need to take as a as a solution so what are the steps in in implementing this solution solution steps the technical steps so the very first thing in this uh, solution is you need a couple of artifacts to be implemented in your s4 system so i'm going to drop them them so the first artifact which you need is a class of course it's going to be a custom class i'm going to name it as zcl um, anubhav and let me name it as um, rest handler rh so this is a class which you need to implement it's called rest handler class and the next one you need also another class called rest resource provider okay i call it as re rb resource provider rp so what is the relationship between resource handler and resource provider so resource pro handler is the class which is going to receive the request so when a request enter in s4 system it will be hitting directly your resource handler class and then this request depending on which entity set or which is the the requested resource uh, you need to redirect the call to the resource provider so there can be multiple resource provider imagine if i'm implementing maybe a simple student management system so one re report uh, resource provider class will be on student another will be on uh, uh, on books another will be maybe um, the exams so there can be multiple resources so you can compare it like multiple entity sets and then in each of the resource provider you will have the implementation for the get put and post request okay so this is how you will be having ultimately those implementation in this resource provider so for simplicity we will only have one resource provider in this example which i will take of course you can go ahead and implement multiple of them like rp1 2 and 3 and so on and how does this this resource handler then connects to this provider so that happens via something called a router so you you would have a resource router which is going to help you to connect to your resource handler which is first going to receive the request and then it will redirect your your requests to these resource handlers all right so that's what will will happen so we will also have something called a router class resource router class which will route your request when it is arrived at this place from here you can write now look at the advantage of this approach how beautifully this is implemented is because since you have the single point of contact from outside all your authorization checks you can implement in one single class which is resource handler so any get request any post request which comes you want to check authorization you don't have to duplicate your authorization in every resource provider class you can put it centrally over here in this hub okay so this is acting like as a main main line main request handler which receives all the requests as a single point of contact and then internally you have all the providers which does their internal jobs the entire complexity from the caller point of view is hidden so if you really look at the caller can be a fury app can be a you know a, in another application they are the callers so when they call it they only talk to this resource handler and this is where you as a developer would also want to add common functionality like authorization checks or whether this user is allowed to access certain resources or not so that's what all you can do it in this hub that's that's the main advantage of this architecture based on resource handler and resource provider and then of course the hub is what connects them together we're going to learn all of this all of this in part two of this video stay tuned for part two you can uh, subscribe this channel and hit the bell icon so that's when that's when you get notified also for part two now to implement this resource handler it's extremely important that you 
inherit from a standard SAP uh, class. So let me just also uh, tell you what that class will be. So it's basically inheritance. So I'm going to write this like this because it's an inheritance. So let's indicate inheritance now. And also wanted to just change the style with an arrow. I'm just going to format the shop because we are going to do an inheritance from standard class. All right. So that's the main reason. Okay. So let's put here the class name. This is going to be a standard SAP class, which you must have to inherit to give the special power to your custom class to, to, to receive the HTTP request and then can has a power to respond to it. So you have to give that a special authority. And of course, it's not nothing related to security, but you, the, this is the way of implementing the REST API with simple rest in above so the class name is cl underscore rest underscore http underscore handler this is one class you have to use it and when it comes to this one on the right side the resource provider also has to um, actually inherit from a standard sap class called cl underscore rest underscore resource yeah so what is the benefit of inheriting these classes now? They will basically generate the basic template for you where you can start writing your code. So you don't have to worry about, you know, parsing or you don't have to worry about creating the request response objects. These objects are already available with the classes which we are inheriting from. We can directly use these objects in order to implement our um, our REST implementation. So that's what is, is is part of the implementation we will be doing. And then finally, of course, you will have a request object which you will receive it. And as a result, you have to, uh, you know, send the response. So you will have a response object which you also have to prepare accordingly. So that's what something you have to do it. So there will be a response object, response object you have to prepare. So we'll be working with creating the request and then preparing the response and sending it. And these these classes you have to use to inherit and implement your resource provider and resource handler. So that's what we will be doing in the next part of this video. So stay tuned on this channel. If you feel my videos are helping you, please give a thumbs up and uh, do let me know what else do you want me to create a video on what topic. And uh, for the latest trainings on S4 HANA, ABAP on HANA, come SAP UI5, Fiori and OData services, Feel free to subscribe our channel and also uh, do uh, know your training needs on anubavtrainings.com. With that, Anubav signing out. Thank you so much and I will see you in the next video with the implementation information.